Oh, you still buy your marshmallows? Ooh. You guys know how I feel about that, all right? I think we should work on that and I'd like to help you. So let's first address this, which is the number one question that we're gonna get, which is why? Why make marshmallows? Well, two things. They're unbelievably easy to make. Second thing is that you have complete and total control over the marshmallow. You can flavor it however you want. You want rose water and blueberry marshmallows? You, you do it. You want salsa flavored marshmallows? Sure, go ahead. Yes, I would judge you for it, but it doesn't matter because you can do it. Also, the third thing is the texture is just a million times better. Anyway, I'm not gonna try and sell you on it. If you don't wanna make it, then I don't care. But with that said, let's make this, shall we? All right, so you're gonna start by greasing a nine by nine inch baking pan with a neutral flavored oil, and then you're gonna dust it with a mixture of half potato starch and half powdered sugar. So one cup, one cup. That's, that's what this is. Whisk it together and you dust it. It's simple. And just make sure that you coat every square inch of this thing. Don't miss a spot or otherwise it's gonna stick there and that's a no good. <clears throat> I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. Now in the bowl of a stand mixture, you're gonna add a half a cup or 120 milliliters of water and anything that's two teaspoons or less of a flavor extractive like rose water, you can add that here with the exception of vanilla extract. Then you're gonna sprinkle on top three envelopes or 22 grams of powdered gelatin, give that a little mix and then just let that sit. Then in a medium sized pot, you're gonna add one and a half cups or 330 grams of granulated sugar, one and a quarter cup or 385 grams of light corn syrup. I know a lot of people have problems with this. Look, if you don't wanna use it, there are other things you can use. A lot of different sugar syrups will work. I've heard people use maple syrup just fine. So, you know, test at your own risk. Half a cup or 120 milliliters of water. Also, don't forget a tiny little pinch of salt. Give it a little mix and then set that over medium high heat and bring that to a light boil. Don't boil it too hard unless you wanna to go to foam city. Now, once it starts lightly boiling, do not stir it again. You could end up getting the sugar to crystallize, which is not good. And you're just going to let that boil until it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit or 115 degrees Celsius, five to six minutes. Immediately remove from the heat and let those bubbles subside a little. And then with your stand mixer set up with the whisk attachment, you're gonna start whisking that gelatin down there. It'll be a little bit hard and sort of like break up a little bit, which is totally fine. And then you're gonna slowly, steadily stream in your sugar syrup down the side of the bowl and into the mixer as it's mixing on low speed. Make sure that you're streaming this down the side of the bowl. Don't actually like pour it directly in the mixture. Gradually increase the speed all the way up to high. Once you get to the high speed, you're just gonna keep gradually streaming in that syrup along the side of the bowl until all the syrup is added and you're just gonna keep whisking it for about five minutes or until it's super voluminous, white and thick. That, that doesn't sound right. You'll notice the right consistency when it pulls super thick ribbons like this. Now it's pretty much done, but before you pull it off, go ahead and beat in two teaspoons or five grams of vanilla extract if you want to, I, I would recommend it. Now I don't want to alarm you, so don't get all flippy dippy when I say this, but you're gonna want to work quickly because it's gonna start to set the longer you wait. So immediately remove from the stand mixer and pour all the contents into your prepared baking pan. Once all that's added, lightly dampen your hands and just kind of, you know, spread it out to the sides and smooth out the top, make it look nice. Just make it look nice. Like you have a little, little marshmallow party, you know? And well, that's actually it. Now all you gotta do is just leave it out on the counter at room temperature, fully exposed, don't cover it or anything for about 12 hours, you know, overnight. And wow, look at that. Just like magic, it's the next day. So the next day, once it's nice and set, powder the top again with, with that 50-50 potato starch and powdered sugar, but I don't know what I'm saying right now. Dust a cutting board with that, and then you're gonna carefully sort of pry the sides away with using a spatula, and you should be able to pick it up out of there relatively easy. There might be a little bit of sticking, but it should come out nicely if you dusted it correctly in the beginning. Place it on your board, and then to portion it, just lightly spray a knife with oil and then powder it again with that powder mixture and cut it into squares as big or as small as you want. This is gonna make about anywhere between 32 to 64 squares depending on how you cut it. So that's that's a lot. Once you're done cutting them, sprinkle them with some more of that starch mixture, toss, 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 make sure all the cut sides are coated. We don't want any sticky bits. You need to coat these really well on that. And then after that, well, you're done. You made marshmallows. You can store them in an airtight container for weeks, I've heard even months. You know what to do with marshmallows. Toast them, put them in some hot chocolate, put them in some hot chocolate and toast them, you know, you get the idea, s'mores, you can do anything. The world is your marshmallow, okay? But do you want to know what else is your marshmallow? B-roll.
that is it. So marshmallows are here. I don't have anything else to say about them, but I do have to say, ow. I don't know if you noticed, but I, have, I got a new knife. I used it on the marshmallows. The first time I used my brand new knife, beautiful vegetable to julienne. No, no, no. Yeah. Let's 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 look at it. I'm, I'm gonna go get it. I'll go get it. It's always a mess. Okay, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but. Ooh, woo, look at that. Look at that. I mean, come on. Now that's something special. Holding this near my face is making me nervous, so. So yeah, I have, a, I have a problem. I don't know where the line is between hoarding and collecting with knives. Got a lot of stuff coming. The website's going live soon. I'm talking to someone that's really freaking amazing that uh, you know you guys know and you guys have talked about a lot and speculate all you want, but you'll never figure it out till you see it, so. But anyway, with that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.